Right now we have Arizona State historian Marshall Trimble joining us live in studio. Marshall, first of all, thank you so much for your time. It's so My great pleasure, to have Emma, you. Paul. When you look at uh, the events that are happening today, what are some of your takeaways with the people who are speaking? What does that point to with the, the life and the legacy of Senator John McCain? He always preached uh, civility and I, I watched him mature. I knew him when he first came to Arizona. Kind of, uh, uh, we've been friends ever since uh, I took him into the Superstition Mountains with some others to uh, uh, acquaint him with Arizona's beautiful desert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but he's, uh, he, he always, in his whole career, he's preached civility. And it shows with the people who are speaking today and in Washington uh, that the man uh, crossed party lines and. And that's one of the things as a historian and a writer, I, I appreciate probably more than anything else. And I have a lot of things to admire him for, but that's, that's um, his, his working with both sides and trying to work together for a better country. Mm -hmm. And we need more people like that. And that's the saddest part about him leaving us. Marshall, you've seen the list of pallbearers and the list of ushers. And every single one of them had a connection to John in some way. And we were talking to Bram this morning from D.C. And he said that there was a Russian dissident who Vladimir Putin had tried to kill, who will be a pallbearer for this <laughs> event. You're, it makes you laugh, doesn't it? Because yeah. do you think that's a little dig, one last dig that John McCain is getting into the establishment, one last little poke from the maverick? He was pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're a, we're a state of mavericks. We've been mavericks ever since before we got statehood. It's one of the things that held us back in Washington in 19, well, the late 1800s and until 1912. We were the last they finally let in. And it's interesting, they say, uh, you probably, uh, one wag back in Washington said back in 1912, it'll be 100 years before Arizona sends anybody to Washington that's going to make a difference. Can you we sent up Carl Hayden right away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you tell me, I mean, you've been a, a historian for the state of Arizona for quite some time. Can you tell me the differences you have seen pre-John McCain and now post-John McCain? Um, yeah, he, uh, as far as before he came here, yeah. um, he, he brought, he brought a, a, a swagger, I guess, uh, to, the, to the Senate uh, and, and the House before that. But there was, there was just, there was just something about him, and he, he, he got along with everybody. I just had a letter yesterday from um, a, a reporter up in the White Mountain uh, Independent, uh, talking about when the Apache, the White Mountain Apache, invited him up to a ceremony to make him a warrior. That's and, a heck of an honor, is it yeah, not? Yeah, and she said, uh, you know, she said, why do you, why do you? Um, uh, w why do you do so many things for the Indians? Uh, and uh, he said, uh, she said, because they don't vote for you. <laughs> he said, because it was the right thing to do. Oh, wow. And that sums up his career, I think. You know what, speaking to that, there was actually part of the ceremony that you're going to see today. Jonah Little Sunday is a Navajo flutist. He's going to be uh, playing a song during the ceremony. So I think that too, I mean, just so much thought in every single moment of this memorial service that we're gonna take part in today. We were hearing uh, just what a, a scholar John McCain was over the last few days and that people don't give him credit for being as smart as he was. His attention to detail as a statesman, I think is reflected in this funeral today. Is there anything looking at the memorial service in the lineup of, of, of events and speakers um, that stands out to you in particular that says that's quintessential McCain? It, it's it's a very eclectic, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the cast of characters is fascinating, and uh, I've never I've never seen a memorial service with such an interesting group of people, uh, and uh, usually it's just the usual suspects, <laughs> these, but but not 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 with John McCain. Yeah. If you're just joining us right now, it's Paul Gerke alongside Emma Jade. We're bringing you breaking news coverage as John McCain's motorcade takes his body where it was lying in state at the Arizona State Capitol Rotunda to North. Phoenix Baptist Church for today's memorial service. Our guest, Marshall Trimble, uh, Arizona State historian. Marshall, what kind of hole does John McCain leave, not just in the Senate, but in the state of Arizona? What is it going to take for someone to fill those shoes? I think he leaves a hole in the whole world, at least the free world, and uh, because he was, uh, he, he was the leader not in not not in just this country in this state. He was a leader. He was a world leader, and it's going to be hard to find somebody. But I uh, I lived through. I grew up with Barry Goldwater. Was was on some of his boards and things, and 
And I, I, I thought when Barry left us, uh, first he, re he retired, before, uh, mm -hmm. but didn't die in office, but mm -hmm. he left us. We thought, all of us kind of thought, who will fill his shoes? And here comes John McCain. Wow. So it is my hope and prayer <laughs> that uh, we keep the trend going. Somebody else comes along. McCain spoke at his memorial, did he not? Yes. Yeah. Yes, he did. So six terms as a senator. What are some historical moments that stick out to you the most during those six terms? The immigration reform. He was he was for the immigration reform, and that was one of the big things. And it, it's it's been a long fight, and I hope in his memory maybe. Um, I'm, I, I, I'm skeptical, let's say, but uh, I hope in his memory that back in Congress they say, let's get some immigration reform. Let's get this immigration reform. It's not rocket science. You're looking live at pictures right now of John McCain's motorcade. They're on uh, northbound I-17 right now. They're expected to exit at Camelback Road and take that eastbound to Central Avenue and then Central up to uh, North Phoenix Baptist Church where today's memorial service is taking place. Right now they're just crossing underneath Thomas Road so you can see that. It does look like traffic even on the other side may be slowed down quite a bit. I'm sure a lot of people who are out there on the roads want to stop and take a second to just be part of this, this historical moment for the state of Arizona. Marshall, this might be a tough question to answer, but when we look back 50 years from now at the legacy that John McCain left behind, what will be the thing that stands out? You know, is there anything that separates him from the rest of his fellow politicians of his time? I think his personality, uh, there are a lot of things. Uh, he is a bona fide war hero, there's no doubt about it. He was a graduate of one of the academies, and um, well, the Naval Academy. My son was a West Pointer, so I have to <laughs> give equal time there. Well, thank you for but, your uh, service, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that reminds me of a story real quick. Please. Um, uh, everybody's got their favorite John McCain story, and it, every time he would see me, it seems, he would say, Marshall was a Marine, and he said, I wanted to join the Marines, but when I went down to sign up for the Marines, they wouldn't take me because my parents were married. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd tell that he, over and over again. Yes. And, and I just I just laugh along with it. And the audience, of course, all liked it. And he liked he, It's that old Army, <laughs> uh, Army Mar Navy Marines thing, mm -hmm. and, and uh, it's all in good fun. You know, what's so funny, his, uh, someone who joined us yesterday on our show during our special coverage, Doug Cole, who was a former staffer, he had an entire list that he had printed out of the quintessential John McCain jokes. <laughs> the ones he would repeat over that and over. That one wasn't on there, so I think he needs to add that to the list. But isn't that funny that he, he knew the jokes that worked in the audience? You know, you are a veteran, and you said that a lot of your interaction with John McCain was at you know vet, different veteran affairs. Yes, uh, well, I was honorary chairman of it, uh, for veterans for the re-election of John McCain uh, one time. And um, um, another, another little thing about when I retired from Scottsdale Community College about four years ago, 2014, they said, we've invited Senator McCain to come to your retirement party, oh but it was at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I said, he'll never, he won't get up and come clear <laughs> out here to Scottsdale Community College at seven and o'clock for me. And, uh, and I, I just, I never expected it. And about 6.45 that morning, we were all there in, at the, where they were getting ready to start. He comes in. Come on. He came in and he stayed the whole time. Wonderful. And um, they had flown my son in secretly from New York City uh, uh, to be there. And, uh, and my son just said, I cannot believe that you got John McCain here. <laughs> I said, well, but, but he stayed, he gave a talk, and of course he told me about uh, uh, his parents being married mm -hmm. and so forth. Uh, he, he, he never let that one go by without. <laughs> <laughs> Did he say anything else to you that was noteworthy after making such a surprise appearance? He, he, well, yeah, he, was, he just talked about my work as a state historian, as a historian, and uh, I had done a lot of things with him, you know, over the years. Mm -hmm. and ridden in parades with him and things like that. And, but um, I, I, it, it was really nice. I, I just, I don't, I don't dwell on, uh, on accolades <laughs> very much. I, right. I'm kind of, uh, kind of uh, just embarrassed by it, I think sometimes. I'm just a small town Arizona boy. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's what maybe Senator McCain loved so much about you was probably how, how humble you are. Well, he was, he was, he was a real, real, 
it was it was a character. He was a character, but he was a fascinating character, yeah. and he was full of energy. His staff told me one time he's, he's he, he 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 runs them to death. He's like <laughs> he's like a Duracell battery. He just doesn't stop. What did they call his staffers yesterday on the show? Do you remember? Oh darn it! They had a nickname. Oh, it was Hotel California. Hotel California. Yeah. You could check out anytime you like, but you could never leave. That's the way he <laughs> treated his staffers. Yeah. Um, I found it interesting. This memorial service that's planned to start at 10 o'clock here at the top of the hour is is pretty well laid out. Tributes, readings, hymns. It ends in a recessional of My Way by Frank Sinatra. Do you think that does a good job of summarizing the life that John McCain lived? That's how I've ended some interviews here recently. I said he did it his way, and I said to paraphrase or, or to steal from Paul Anka and Frank Sinatra, <laughs> uh, he did it his way, and he certainly did, and he went out his way too. And you know what? The ceremony that you are going to see in just a few minutes is all planned out by Senator John McCain. We want to give you kind of an idea of what you can expect. And we'll start with an invocation by Senior Pastor Dr. No Garcia from the North Phoenix Baptist Church. Brophy Student Ensemble will then be singing Amazing Grace. We have a reading from his daughter, Bridget McCain. She'll be doing a scripture reading. And then a tribute by his longtime friend, Grant Woods. Another tribute by Tommy Espinoza. Then uh, the Navajo flutist that we mentioned as well will play a song, Expression of Love, followed by Larry Fitzgerald. And then a tribute by Vice President Joe Biden. Another reading by Andrew McCain. And another song by Brophy Student Ensemble. And you know, it's interesting having the Brophy Student Ensemble. Can you imagine when they were first approached to be part of this, what that must have been like? I think Senator McCain did an amazing job at reaching out to people that didn't expect to be a yes. part of his final farewells. Um, and then following that, we'll have a message by Father Edward Reese, who spoke yesterday at the Rotunda during the memorial there. A hymn going home performed by Jay Smith on a bagpipe, then a benediction and dismissal by senior pastor No Garcia, followed by that recessional we spoke of a moment ago, My Way, the original music by Frank Sinatra. If you're just joining us, 925 this morning, Paul Gerke alongside Emma Jade here in the 12 News studio bringing you breaking news of the motorcade uh, carrying Senator John McCain's casket from the Arizona State Capitol Rotunda where he lie in state last night to North Phoenix Baptist Church. We're at about 10 a.m. this morning. Another memorial service will be underway. We're joined live right now by our guest, Marshall Trimble, official Arizona State historian, who has seen a whole lot of John McCain's impact on the state of Arizona. You know, I think the one way that people have been remembering John throughout this entire, I mean, it's been 14 months. What was it, 14 months since he was diagnosed with glioblastoma? July of last year. July. As a man who bridged the gap from the left to the right, is there any enduring piece of legislation or, or, or is it just a sentiment that he leaves behind that, that sort of makes that aisle a little more narrow? I, I hope, I hope he, he lived, he, he, I hope he lived for this. I mean, he lived for this. I, I hope, I hope it, it, they carry it out because it would be a great tribute to his memory and to his legacy if, uh, if we would see, but, um, it's so polarized back there right now, and uh, and that's that's really sad. Uh, that well, he speaks to it. Uh, the fact that President Donald Trump was not invited to his his service. Vice President Mike Pence will be uh, there in his stead in Washington. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about that? He did it his way. This <laughs> yeah. is John. We go back to that. We go back to Frank Sinatra. <laughs> yeah. And. Um, I'm afraid if Trump, had, uh, President Trump, had been there, I, uh, I think it would have detracted from the solemnness and from the whole character of John McCain. And we're here to celebrate his character, not to be upstaged by, um, by some, um, well, <laughs> just, just outlandish things. And and uh, and it, it's just, it it just the way. It, the people who are coming here are in big respect, deep respect for McCain. When you look back, including at his, his adversaries. When you look back at his life, what are some moments in Arizona history that you think we should remember John McCain for? The man. He, he came. He came to Arizona. He was a he was a war hero. Um, he um, uh, he was down so many times. I, I read the Arizona Republic article by Don, Dan no, 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 Wiki yesterday and. 
And I just thought, man, I've, I'd forgotten all the times he just took took a beating in these political races, and um, it looked like it looked like it was all over, and he just bounced back, and he always would bounce back. You knock him down, and he gets back up again. Do you know what? I think he was never he was never afraid to admit when he was wrong or when he was knocked down. I think that says a what lot. What was the about quote him yesterday? I'd rather lose an election than lose a war. Than right? lose a war. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and he that's always right. admitted when he was wrong. Always admitted when he maybe didn't make the right decision. I think that says a lot about him. It does because you won't find many politicians today no. that will that are do that will do that. And to do that, you've got to lo have a lot of confidence in yourself. Yes. And he he just must have had. Uh, you know, he's been a competitor. He, he was a wrestler in high school, and he boxed at, uh, at uh, Annapolis. And uh, he's, uh, he's, he, he's been a fighter. He, he had to be a fighter to survive uh, the, the torture that was, he, for five and a half years. Mm -hmm. So he got into politics, and, uh, you know, he's, uh, he, he's, never, he's never down long. <laughs> you're looking live at pictures right now as the motorcade gets closer and closer to North Phoenix Baptist Church. You're seeing more and more people standing out there. I believe, are they on Central right now? Or is it is on Camelback right, right now? Uh, camelback. They're on Camelback right now, it looks like. But yeah, you could see people out there with the phones just yeah. trying to get as close as they can to witnessing our final goodbye to a man that's been living in the state since he was, what, 45 years old? Yeah, just to give you an idea of people who will be inside at the memorial service, former Vice President Joe Biden, as we mentioned before, he will actually be speaking. 24 sitting U.S. senators will be in attendance today. Four former senators. Some other notable leaders, too, from the state of Arizona are expected to attend the memorial service at the North Phoenix Baptist Church. On top of that, they have about 1,000 seats that were made available for the public. But those tickets... You were able to get some online, some invited by the McCain family, so they are long gone. Don't go expecting to have a seat. You know, you might be outside, but hey, being outside too, just paying your respects, I think is phenomenal. We're expected that motorcade to arrive at about 940 this morning, so sometime within the next 10 minutes or so, mm -hmm. where Cindy McCain and family, all seven of his children in tow, will uh, arrive at the North Phoenix Baptist Church and be greeted there by senior pastor, Dr. No Garcia. They'll be escorted into the church briefly and then the honor guard will go out to the hearse and stand watch. Yeah, the armed forces body bearer team will then retrieve the casket and proceed into the church. That's gonna be happening right around 955. You'll see the pallbearers there as well. Clergy will proceed into the sanctuary head of the casket followed by the pallbearers and then the family and that's where things will really get started. We're expecting the ceremony to wrap up sometime after 11, around 11.15 this morning. And after that, the body of Senator McCain will be escorted to the airport where he'll be flown out to Washington, D.C. The senator will lie in state Friday at the U.S. Capitol before memorial services Saturday, and he'll be laid to rest on Sunday in a private ceremony.